Welcome back to The Joy of Vinyl. I'm Rick Coast. Are you ready for a topic that some folks kind of get upset over? Well, it's one of those things that I personally have struggled with, and I still do at times. It's almost like having an angel on one shoulder telling me not to do it, and a devil on the other saying, go ahead, Rick, turn those knobs. You know you want to. Well, in this case, the angel is an audiophile. And the struggle being waged for my audiophile soul is whether or not to use tone controls. Let's dive in. So, who cares if someone wants to use tone controls? Why do I struggle with it or even think about it? If I were to get up, switch the selector on my amp to T, and enable the tone controls, well, who would ever know? Well, I would and it would bother me. That's the grumpy audiophile angel on my shoulder yanking on my ear to get my attention. They want me to flip that switch to bypass the tone controls. So here's my struggle. I grew up with tone controls. They were on my dad's receiver uh, pretty much my entire um, teenage life and on every other piece of audio equipment I've ever owned. I enjoy bass, not booming bass, but I typically turn the treble down a notch and add more bass, or I used to. It wasn't until I became much older that I began to hear whispers in my ear that tone controls were placed there by the devil. Well, not really, but still. If they're so bad, why are they even there? And why do some folks consider them bad in the first place? They're just knobs. Well, let's start with the first question. Why are they there? Well, back in the day, Speaker technology wasn't as advanced as it is today. Some speakers lacked depth. The high ends may have even been buried in the bass or there wasn't much bass at all, depending on the speakers. The tone controls were there for the listener to tweak or correct the sound that they were hearing. They were essential when speakers weren't up to the task. They were also there for eager listeners like me to pump up both the bass and the treble to give what I thought was more excitement to the music. Oh well. Today, unless you are purchasing a receiver or an integrated amp like the Galleon TS120 that, that I own, you'll notice that many companies have done away with tone controls. And those that do include them, well, they give you a way to bypass them, to remove them completely from the, uh, the signal path. The Denon 600NE that I used for years allowed for this, well, as does the Galleon TS120 that I have. Now, speaker tech has come a long way. They help take care of what tone controls used to be there for. And kind of moving your speakers and placing them with respect to your listener air, or listening area also negates the need for tone controls. And that's where the audio files come in. When a piece of music is recorded and mastered, the sound that reaches your ears from your chosen format, mine being vinyl, well, that sound is how the artist intended. If I intentionally start turning knobs, well, I'm essentially introducing some bad juju. <laughs> well, but so what? Again, who cares if someone wants to booth, booth, boost both the treble and the bass if that's what they like to do? Yeah, here's one way of looking at it, and it's one way I like to explain it. Let's say you're walking through a museum and you're admiring all the paintings. You pause and look at Van Gogh's Starry Night. You marvel at the swoops of blue and white as well as the glowing yellow orbs dangling like lanterns in the sky. You glance to your left and there's a woman standing there. She's looking at the same painting, but she has on a pair of glasses and those glasses have kaleidoscope lenses. Strange, right? So you ask her about them, and she tells you that they enhance the painting, that it's much better with them on. So you try them on and you see something like this. Now how do you think Van Gogh would respond? Another person walks up with a pair of glasses meant to enhance, say, the, the blue spectrum. And they walk around and the color blue is accentuated in every painting that they look at. Are they truly seeing the painting? This is sort of what tone controls do. By many accounts, the jazz great Charles Mingus was not a man of even temper. If I boosted the treble and brought him in to listen to what I'd done, he'd break my fingers. And I'm not even kidding. He'd seriously break my fingers and 
probably my equipment after that. And don't walk away thinking uh, that anyone can tell you how to enjoy your music. If you want to bump up the bass or the treble and you have the ability to do so, then do it. If the audio file on your shoulder pokes at you and tells you to stop, it's none of their business. Music is meant to be enjoyed, either together or alone. Enjoy it the way you want to. The companies that include tone controls on their units do it to give you that choice and that flexibility. Me? At first, I really did find it hard to forego using tone controls. I have high cholesterol and I know I shouldn't eat certain foods. I'm at that age when the sins of the past is, as far as eating foods, you know, high in fats and everything, it's, it's going to catch up to me. I should cut them out knowing what I know, but it's, it's still hard. So what about you? Do you use tone controls? Now this is a judgment-free zone to steal a slogan from a gym I go to in the morning, but habits are hard to break. One habit that's a good one is clicking subscribe over here. <laughs> gotcha. Thank you for watching. And until next time, please take care of yourself and enjoy your records.